Hello and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. You join me tonight for another painting workshop with Pascal, and this evening we'll be learning how to paint fur techniques on the jackalope from Moonstone. If you're brand new to the channel, click the heart to follow the live Twitch stream weeknights Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 7pm. Also, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to receive notifications from YouTube for the latest videos and updates. And now, on with the show. So then, hello Pascal. Good evening everybody, how are you doing? And please don't tell me you got a cold or you got a cough or a sneeze. So uh, how are you feeling? Are, are you, have you got the sniffles or are no, you all good? I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I got an occasional cough or maybe a sneeze, but it's not, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry. Oh, that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> and good evening, Pascal. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Anybody here? Anybody need some toilet paper? I got some. <laughs> Unfortunately, your mic is all muffled by the loo roll. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me get rid of this stuff. Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. And so, what is tonight's workshop then? So we're going to be doing a, a little bit of um, a technique uh, painting. Uh, sorry, a texture painting uh, with a actually, as I think, is a pretty simple way to do it um, uh, with uh, surprising results. And it's something I picked up with an, uh, from an, uh, a workshop with uh, Kirill Kanaev. Um, which is a technique uh, used for uh, textures on uh, like uh, something like this, right? Uh, uh, fabrics, uh, but can easily be used for things like fur. And uh, that's what I'm going to be uh, showing you today, how I'm going to paint fur on uh, this jackalope model, which is uh, basically uh, a hair with antlers. <laughs> it doesn't get any stranger or fantastically wonderful than that, does it? Let's be honest. Yeah, I got a little bit of a theory about that, um, showing you how to do it on a uh, on a flat surface. Uh, I've prepared uh, a, a little uh, a little bit for that, and then I'm going to show you how to do it on the model. And that's it. All right, excellent. Let's jump straight on in then. There we go. So people, get your notepads because class is in. The colors I'll be using today, uh, uh, which is in every way interchangeable by any colors that you're using. Uh, brown leather from Scale 75, a bit more orange, this is orange leather. Adding a bit more yellow to it, uh, the name is completely faded, but uh, I believe this is Iroko. Uh, and then we've got birch, which is kind of a like bleach bone kind of thing. In my case, I've primed the mini in black. You could do any color of priming beneath it as long as you're using color. Uh, I'm using colors that are really uh, opaque, so they'll cover well over over black. Uh, plus, the blackness is going to help me uh, tone down uh, the shades a lot. So this is why I would prefer to do this on black uh, over white. Um, the theory. Let's begin with that. Uh, what we're going to do? You you have to get a bit of a, a good grasp of the spheres theory, right? So the spheres theory is explaining how there's light on top and there's shade on the bottom, uh, but there's a uh, divide which is above half, where uh, where this is shade and then it's turning up lighter, lighter, lighter. But it's a good idea to have some um, some sense of how light and darkness um, interact on your model. And of course, yes, that video is on exclamation YouTube. Go and check it out. It's well, well worth the watch. I'm going to divide my shape into uh, preferably uh, three areas, which is the darkest area, your mid-tone, and then your near highest highlight tone. Because we're going to, we've got four colors. These three are going to make up my uh, first areas. The birch is going to end up after that. So I'm going to divide my areas, and I'm just going to plain paint them in as a uh, color by numbers uh, thing. Now, uh, here it comes. Uh, I'm creating a texture of fur, and fur is actually little stripes uh, in order to create that volume effect of uh, light and darkness. Uh, and 
even the fact that fur has lighter tones on top and darker tone uh, hairs uh, be beneath it. I'm going to create uh, a overlapping uh, hair texture by taking this color. I've got this color loaded in my brush and I'm going to take this and I'm going to create the hairs like this. Now this isn't like an exaggerated uh, view of uh, what's really happening and the melt model is obviously going to be much more uh, smaller. But in effect, I'm going to create something like this you know, because I'm creating really big strokes. They're not really nice and tight because in reality, this would be like this. But to exaggerate, I'm going to do it like this. To create the effect of it uh, interloping from thicker to thinner is try to create much more around here and have less strands down there. Create a fullerness around here. Now this is the same color as this, so in reality, this should blend in with this, right? You can still, because it's wet, you can still uh, see the difference between this and this. Okay, so that's layer one. I'm gonna go to the second layer, which is this color over this. I'm taking the, high, uh, the lighter color and I'm painting it over the uh, darker color. Okay, so so far I think you, you get the picture, right? So now we're going to end up with the fourth color, which is the brightest there is, but we do not have a uh, area assigned to it. So it's just going to be the top. And well, something like that. But this is in effect what it could look like. Obviously, uh, create a much more depth with this if you like, uh, don't do this in three steps. But in, let's say, five steps where you, or even six steps, where you create an area of the two tones mixed in, and these two tones mixed in, and then one tone uh, towards highlights. But if you do that too, um, uh, you, you can do that, easy as that. And it would make for even more uh, smoother blends in that fur and in the texture. So um, I thought to do... Uh, this tutorial on this part of the leg here and, and this leg I, I chose it purposely because it's a bit flat sculpted here so it's a flat on top and this part is going to be uh, one area then here's another area and this is the darkest area uh, as always I'm using some trusty water plus to uh, thin my water uh, thin my paints so I'm gonna go for the darkest area first um, which is underneath here I'm going to do it like this, where I'm concentrating the most in this area. This is going to be my border. Now already you can see that there's a little line of black in here. I hope you guys can see this. Yep. Yeah, is it light enough? So there's a little bit of blackness still in here. Uh, and that's okay. And let's see, something like this. You can do this very sketchy like I'm doing right now. Thing is, uh, even if you do not do these borders uh, extremely tight, it's okay because you're all going to blend it away. There could be some, uh, it's okay to have some, some chaos in there, right? But this is the first part. Looks a little really weird, weird right? I'm going to find my uh, second layer, my second. Uh, this is the fun thing, especially if you're pretty aware of that light thing and the spheres thing. This is a cool way to just start defining your shapes. And if you're doing it right, even in this state, you could take your distance and see, uh, am, I, am I hitting the target, right? Am I making some believable uh, light sources in here? The easiest part to, uh, if you're doing an entire model in this, this style, in, with this uh, technique, uh, the best I can advise you on is doing it in parts. Like like I'm doing right now, I'm doing one leg. When, when it, Once I'm finished with a leg, I'm going to do another part, another part, etc. If you're uh, trying to do this, like this color all over the entire model first, and then the next color all over the entire model, uh, you're going to go crazy. Gonna make sure that this is a really nice layer. I'm gonna go over twice, maybe even three times. 
And as you can see, um, uh, even while I'm just filling in a square or an area, I constantly try to keep in mind that the direction of the, uh, the hair is like this. So uh, I'm constantly trying to move with the texture. So now I'm going to do the final area, lightest parts. And this is going to be a difficult color because over black it's uh, not difficult. But this is why I chose uh, scale 75 paints because they do this very well. Uh, waiting for some paint to dry, but uh, already you can see, uh, you can have a look at it. Uh, did I do the areas correctly? And uh, well, in, in the rough sketch, I would say yes. Yeah, I mean, from a very basic free color uh, perspective, then it's a great example of light, mid and shade, isn't it really? Exactly. I've got to make sure that um, although I can have some black in here, where the darkest color is going towards the, uh, the, the primer color. Uh, I should not have any uh, of the, the black in these, uh, in these borders. I mean, in, a, in effect, if he wasn't actually doing the, um, the texturing of the fur, you could sort of wet blend these, couldn't you? To get rid of those hard oh, sure. lines. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, and everything that uh, the sort of the principles all remain the same as far as the placement of the the, the colors. So mm -hmm. yeah, well, even with the with the texture in it, you could do uh, a wet blending. Um, the thing is, a lot of people would like to uh, dry brush texture like this, right? <laughs> uh, I've got I've got my hand up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a, it's an easy technique to do it and to to. Uh, show that this is fur, but uh, if you look at um, real life fur, you'd rather see like an flowing of colors, and you do not see individual strands of hair. You might see some plucks, uh, white appearing in darker grays or something like that, you know. But it's like a flow, and you do not see individual strands. Uh, but since this is a miniature and a miniaturized version of reality, you've got to exaggerate. Uh, certain aspects like individual strands to simulate fur. While you're topping up on the layers there, question for the chat. When was the last time you painted a miniature which had fur and what fur was it? Let's uh, let's see what uh, what uh, experiences of fur the chat have. <laughs> no, furry experiences. Furry experiences. <laughs> Ah, so here we go. So Chris saying the Nexu from Imperial Assault. Yeah, that's an awesome creature for fur techniques, isn't it? Yes, I know that one very well. Um, Effects is saying bear fur. Okay. Yeah. What, what was was that actually still on the bear, or was it <laughs> was somebody else <laughs> carrying it now? Uh, Lorno saying yesterday doing a Viking wearing a wolf pelt. Awesome. Let's start on the first. A layer of fur, which is my mid-tone, so I already did it. Uh, did this part in the bottom here. I'm gonna make sure I got a really fine tip, and this is why I broke out a really brand new uh, Game Envy uh, brush for this. And I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna make really tiny lines. And you see the the areas uh, up until here, but I'm not gonna take it all the way down there. The thing is, the um, the lighter color over the darker color. This is what's gonna make the uh, the hairs, the bristles, uh, stand out. And actually, these two colors, the, this orange and that darker uh, brown, they're so close and, and um, related to each other almost that it's already really hard to see where one uh, when st one starts and the other one uh, begins. Which I gather will be much easier to see with a lighter color. We're doing just the same, and this this is going to probably show you much better what it's supposed to look like. It is a time-consuming and um, really uh, strenuous uh, technique for your motor skills. You're definitely going to know how to do thin lines, aren't you, afterwards? <laughs> practice, you know, teach that muscle memory. Yes, very good practice this. You see that I'm trying to blend away that line. Mm-hmm. And I'm taking single strands 
of this color much further down. They're going to be spaced uh, much farther apart. So you can already see that the entire look of the fur is going to be really like like blonde may almost. Yeah. So this is what you got to take into account because uh, you're putting light color over your darker color. So the overall look of your uh, fur or your texture or whatever is going to be brighter than uh, what you would anticipate as your average between these colors, right? So if I aimed that this would be my color and this might have been my brightest color, now it's going to be much more towards this side here. Which is not a bad thing. Uh, one, I can always use glazes to tone things down or add some extra tonal uh, features in it. It's much harder to do it the other way around <laughs> to try to blend something lighter up. Okay, so this is uh, already a lot to my liking. I still gotta need some um, uh, intense highlights. I'm gonna take my last color. I'm gonna place them right there on top. And the only thing I'm doing is is the strands. So you're actually picking out the um, the modeled strands here, yeah? Uh, that's what I'm uh, I'm using them indeed, but I'm not necessarily taking them into account. So the, the model is showing me how the flow of the hairs uh, uh, is is going. So in in this way, the hairs are going like this. It will be counterproductive to be painting it like this, right? So I'm gonna try to use that flow, and if I can hit some of those strands, that's that's cool. Uh, if I miss them, it's okay as well. There you go. Look at that. See, now, I'm I'm trying to visualize that now across the entire model. And, and this is uh, maybe the mm. downside of seeing it at such an early stage is that right. contrasting against the black is kind of it, it's difficult it's it, it's jarring but okay. once the but once the entire model's done i think that's going to look amazing well uh, just to uh, uh, help you out then i'll do a bit more of his back and i really love this uh, this face because you're really toying with the with the shapes here uh, trying to recognize the geom geometry in it and so this is this is why this is fun because you do not need to be really itchy fitchy uh, at this level just yet. Uh, just sketching out the, the the shapes here with just three basic colors. But if you're in some way messing up, making too thick strands of hair or making like a blotch, you can easily take the darker color still and go back up. This, in in its entirety, is a sphere as well, which means that the, the colors down here should be much much more muted down than they are there. And one way to show that properly is by using even brighter highlights on the top than you used uh, down here. So I'm taking pure white. You've got to be really careful with this one because it's going to be strong. There you go. And that's about it. Do a little bit like that, and there we go. That's awesome. Do that all the way around. Guys, uh, this was the workshop, so class dismissed. Excellent. Great. Thank you so, so much, Pascal, as always, for another informative workshop. I'm, think, I'm sure that everybody enjoyed uh, tonight's session. Have a good night, everybody, and a good night to Monkey. Bye for now, man. Bye-bye.